Good morning. Uh, welcome to Coffee Shop Church, which happens when it's raining on the mountain. So um, thanks for being flexible. Sorry we couldn't be outside. You'd probably be pretty miserable. So uh, if you could stand and join us in worship. If you need uh, lyrics, there are some greeters out back that have bulletins. And there's no mic system, so everyone needs to sing loud because we have no sound system today. So... Good morning, Loon Mountain Ministry and visitors and friends. Uh, we're all coming here from different places. How many of you guys are from out of town? Raise your hand if you are visiting from out of town. So cool. Now keep your hand raised if this is your first time ever at Loon Mountain Ministry or Loon Mountain Ministry service. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Every year when we're at the, at the, uh, the top of the mountain or every, every week, we find out where people are from, and, and it's so cool that we have people coming from all different places to come and worship with us. And so uh, during this time, I'm just going to say a word of prayer 
But um, wherever we're coming from, whether we're here on vacation and we're excited for an upcoming week, maybe you're here and you're a local and, 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 and life is hard, or maybe you have a, a joy in your life, or maybe a sorrow. I, we're all coming from different places. I know myself right now just trying to work out getting a service acoustically. I'm a little bit stressed, so we're all coming from different places. And praise God for the amazing grace that we just sung about. So let's, let's, uh, let's come before God with a word of prayer as we center ourselves on worship of the creator of the mountains, the creator of the coffee shops, creator of the human beings that he put uh, his am image and stamp on. Lord, uh, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, um, you know, that despite we don't always like the rain, uh, we know that it brings life, and uh, you are the giver of life. And so, Lord, um, would you uh, center us on you rather than all the things that we wanted today to be, and, and might we uh, bring our praise and worship before you, knowing that you're a good God, that you are in control when life doesn't seem like it is, and, and that when, when we're in seasons of joy, we can give you the praise and thanks rather than putting it in the things that we often find our joy in. We love you, Lord, and we trust you, uh, and we thank you for all those here. We pray this in Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 All right. Say, Sandy, and we're going to keep singing about the greatness of God.
Lord, it is your breath that brings us life. It's your breath uh, that, um, that enables us uh, through your spirit to live a life uh, to bring you glory and honor. And, and um, God, I just remember back to, to thinking of what it means that every breath is a gift. And so, Lord, as we, uh, as we pray, as we worship, as we, as we listen to your word, might we be reminded that every, every breath is a gift from you and that we can give thanks for that. We, we love you, Father, and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys may be seated. All right. I'll direct your attention to the back of your bulletins. If anybody in the back row is like, oh, you're not loud enough, just give me the, you know, I, I'm a skier or a, well, like a wakeboarder skier, and we would do like up, so go faster, go slower, or just right. So in the back row, you let me know, yeah. Um, yeah, so on the back of your bulletins, you'll see uh, just some announcements we have. Uh, welcome to the, we'll put in quotation marks, the mountaintop service um, every week uh, throughout the summer, all the way until Columbus Day. We do service at the top of Loon Mountain, obviously, uh, barring a rainstorm or a thunderstorm or something like that. Um, but uh, we'll be here at 1030 uh, every week. There's also a service that meets in here before this. So just before we kind of change everything over in here, there's a service here at 9 a.m. Um, so if you're ever in town and you can't make it to the top of the mountain for whatever reason, we'd love, uh, we'd love you to join in with the service here at 9 a.m. Uh, this morning was actually the first service at, at Waterville Valley as well. Uh, Waterville Valley, um, we actually, it was exciting. I was down there yesterday helping them get uh, the amphitheater set up. And one of the things we've been thinking and dwelling and praying a lot about is that um, in the, I don't know how old Waterville Valley is, but in the many years that Waterville Valley has been around, um, there's never been uh, like, there's been people from the church who go there to do services and stuff like that. There's never been a, like either a building or a sanctuary that is, that, that, that is what it's for. Um, and, uh, we got the opportunity to build an amphitheater at the top of Snows Mountain, which is the old Waterville Valley. It is a beautiful spot. Um, I'm super jealous because I'm up here most of the time at Loon. Um, if you get the chance sometime throughout this summer, I would strongly encourage you Go and visit Waterville Valley Community Church. They meet on uh, Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. And you ride the little chairlift. It's a two-person chairlift up Snows Mountain. That one is completely free. Um, so go and check that out. Uh, the chairlift opens at about 8.30. Yes, the chairlift opens at about 8.30. And that's a good time to shoot to get there. Um, so check out what... 20 minutes to get up the little chair. It is a slow chair, but it's a nice... chairlift. It's a nice seat. Well, no, no, don't tell them that. <laughs> it's safe. Trust me, it's safe. <laughs> it is just slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Um, so, anyways, come visit. Uh, you'll also see a church picnic on July 16th. Uh, we do that as just kind of a celebration. Summer, we usually do it at the beginning of summer, but uh, July 16th was actually the first day we could do it. So, we're going to be having a church picnic after church on Sunday the 16th at 1 p.m. Uh, down in Campton at the White's house. If you don't know them, that's okay. Uh, you can send an email in to the ministry or talk to one of us, and we'll point you in the right direction for that. Uh, also, there's a youth group trip, a Whale's Tail youth group trip, coming up um, a week from this Wednesday. Uh, I am the youth pastor, so if you have questions about that, uh, our youth group is... It's not just this, these trips that we do aren't just for kids that come regularly. If you're in town and you want to go to Wales Tale and join in with our crew, that is totally cool. Uh, it's for middle schoolers and high schoolers. Um, and uh, you'll see my email there. You can talk to me um, on how to get signed up for that. Lots of other opportunities to get involved throughout the week, you'll see. Oh, hi, River. That's my son. Um, yeah, good morning. I Maybe I didn't say good morning yet. Um, Yes, check out different gatherings throughout the week. Uh, we'd love for you to get involved. We, we say a lot here. Faith isn't just something that we do on Sunday. It's something that we live in our everyday lives. And so we find r ways to find rhythms with other believers to uh, come together and to know God better and to worship him. Um, 
With that said, there's a couple ways you can support us. You'll see on the back a uh, little QR code. Um, that's one way to support us online by giving online. Uh, I believe we do have a support box. Uh, I wasn't sure. Uh, we do have a support box out there. You can get, uh, donate that way as well. And then over here where Heidi is, um, there's a little table uh, with a couple things like newsletters. Um, there's communication cards. That's ways you can get uh, connected um, over there. So check that table out. Uh, with that said, I'm going to, we have a Sunday school today. Jody and Kate. And Kate. Jody and Kate. So Sunday school, what are we saying for ages? I mean, I don't know if they're... Everybody. All the kids in the room. So everybody can go. go I'll just stay here. No. <laughs> uh, and they'll head over into the nursery. Awesome. So 50 and over have to stay here. 50 and over have to stay. <laughs> and then we'll have one more song as the kids make their way out. <laughs> All right, as the kiddos get dismissed, if you'll stand and join me. Um, we're going to do Amazing Grace. I know most of you should know, if not all of you, this song. Um, it's always such a good reminder of the grace of God, so join us.
and join us in reading scripture. All right, everyone. Marcus isn't the only one who doesn't have to use a mic. We're going to read um, James 4, verses 4 through 6, 1 John 2, verses 15 through 17, and John 3, 16. So let's read those together. You adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Do you think the scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate, that the spirit he placed within us should be faithful to him, and he gives grace generously. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasures, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from the world. And the world is fading away, along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what God pleases will live forever. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Thank you. I think you may be seated. Yes, thank you, Mark. All right. We do have one mic, but this is just for the uh, people next week. Um, The service in here at 9 a.m., actually listens to the sermon uh, that we do from the previous week. Um, so so we, we have one mic. But um, so good. It was funny when I read, I reread, I was going through the scriptures I, I had this morning, and I was like, wait a minute. It says, because I know John 3.16, for this is how God loved the world. I know it as for God so loved the world, right? And I was like tripped up a little bit. I forgot I used the New Living Translation. Um, First of all, uh, happy 4th of July weekend, everybody. Uh, Thank you, guys. I know I'm sure that's why a lot of our visitors are up here. Um, It is a beautiful time, typically, up in the White Mountains. Um, How many of you guys love our country? Yeah. How many of you guys guys love the mountains? There you go. We got any hikers in here? Any hikers? Raise your hand, hikers. Okay. Do we got any? I'm a I'm a big mountain biker, as you can see. I got a little scar on my. That's I still love it. Believe it or not. How many of you guys? Anybody? Any mountain bikers in here? We got a couple mountain bikers. All right. How many of you guys? Uh, well, like the rivers in the summer. Okay. All right. Let's go to winter. We got any skiers and snowboarders in here? Let's go. Yeah. All right. We don't have any um, um, tele skiers, do we? No. They always tell you if, if they're a tele skier. Uh, how many of you guys, uh, let's go a little, a little deeper than just surface stuff. How many of you guys love your family? How many of you guys love family? I love family. How many of you guys love your homes? You guys got cool houses, fun places to call home? Um, I, you're, like, you're like, where is he going with this? It was kind of a, you know, we're leading into not loving the world. Um, so I, I, a couple of months ago, um, the Snowboarders and Skiers for Christ Conference, uh, they, they came to Waterville Valley, and my good buddy Ryan Leeds, who kind of oversees all of the uh, content that, that Snowboarders and Skiers for Christ puts out, um, he asked me to do a talk um, because I, I, like to, I like to use the ways that I play to do ministry, and so I did a talk about... Um, essentially like not like the balance of fun in ministry, the balance of fun in ministry. And I thought it was very relevant for today's talk uh, because we see three passages that talk, uh, two of which uh, very much in the negative of, of the world and the things of the world, not, not to find yourself friends of the world. Uh, but then um, the other one is that for God so loved the world. And, and I titled today's uh, sermon, To Love or to Not Love the World, uh, as, as Donna probably is very appreciative of my Shakespeare reference. Um, so, to love or to not love 
the world is what I want to talk about today. Just because you raise your hand for any of those things, I love all those things too, uh, doesn't necessarily mean you are a friend of the world. But we're going to, uh, as we are confronted with God's word, at the very least, we shouldn't just brush it off and say, well, no, 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 like it, that's not how it is. Let's, let's, dig, let's dig in a little bit. Because truthfully, if you just brush things off, because honestly, if you were to come and hang out with me, you'd, you'd see that, um, that mountain biking is something that's really important to me. And there are certainly times that mountain biking becomes more than it should for me in my life, as maybe some of the other things in your life uh, do as well. Notice I didn't say, do you love drugs, sex, and rock and roll? Um, oh, we got one in the back. Okay. <laughs> What's what's interesting is is that is that uh, yeah yeah. Um, what's interesting is we often think of the th when we think of these passages. Don't make yourself a friend of the world. You think I'm not going to make myself a friend of of those things in their wrong context is what we're thinking. We don't often think of of loving our families. We don't often think of loving our hobbies or things that are we would identify as healthy as Americans. We don't often think of pride as pride in our country as, as something that's wrong, even if it might be, um, or depending on how, how we put it, how we put it in our uh, kind of in, in ranking in our life. So first things first, this is kind of a, maybe a Bible study methods tool. Um, whenever you come across something that sounds a little conflicting, these, these three verses might sound conflict, conflicting if you don't have much context or understand the words. I would say the first place to go is to look at the words in their original language. Their original language, all three of them were written in the New Testament. That means they were written in Koine Greek. And the word for all three of them, sometimes the word's different. And you're like, okay, well, when God so loved the world, he was loving this Greek word, and it has to do with this thing and this thing. And then these other people who love the world... There, it's a different word. Well, what we find in these three passages is it's the same word. It's this word cosmos. It's where we get the word cosmos from. Um, the idea is it's, uh, it's just a collective, an orderly arrangement, specifically uh, for us and, and what this passage is talking about, an orderly arrangement of people and ideas that people have or, or interests that people have, uh, that humans have. So we can't just say... Um, we can't just say, well, God's talking about something different because he used a different word. So what we have to do next is then say, okay, well, where do I differentiate when to love the world like God loved the world and when to not love the world because it's clearly stating in these two other verses in James and in uh, 1 John that I should not love the world in the same way. So let's, uh, the, the way we do that is we look at the context. Now, obviously, the context for two of them are in the negative. I'm going to go ahead and look at these again. So we've been going through the book of James, if you, if you haven't been around, um, and we're, we've been going verse by verse. We're in James chapter 4. I like it that way because it, it forces me to talk about things that I don't necessarily want to talk about. If I kind of go at it my own way, I typically skip over this thing or that thing, um, which is, is ironic, but... Anyways, you adulterers, James 4, you adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Clearly negative. I don't even have to go any further um, to know that this is a negative passage. Then it goes on to say that God is passionate that the spirit that he put in us, he's passionate that that spirit should be faithful to him, right? That spirit should be faithful to him. And then he says he gives generously grace. Thank God, because the ways in which I love, I often find myself loving the things of the world uh, happen more, more often than I'd like to admit. And I do this, I, I'm literally a Christian for a job. Grace, there's grace abundantly. Now that's not to say I should just boast in that grace and then just go on loving all the things that I love. Let's identify it. So the next one. Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when, the, for when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Clearly, in the negative. Okay, so we've got two verses 
clearly stating that love for the world. Now, what's unique about this, and this is part, this is going to be from these passages, but it's also going to be from kind of my own life experience, is that for the first 21 years of my life, I gave my life to Christ when I was, uh, just before I turned 22 years old, and uh, most of my life, I sought after two, th- ah, three things, three things, I'll throw this other one in. Uh, one, was sports. I loved sports. I wanted to be an athlete. I wanted to be a professional soccer player growing up. That was all I poured my life into. In fact, that was the only thing that motivated me to kind of stay in line with my school and not getting into other trouble was being able to be able to play sports. That was what motivated me. The other one was girls. I wanted to have a girlfriend. I wanted to get married one day. I wanted to be a father. That was a that was one of the things that I loved. Uh, very, very, or held very dearly. Unfortunately, I never uh, really got to have many girlfriends growing up. Third, I have a lovely wife. Now, if you didn't get to meet her, Eunice, she might not even be in here. She's probably, she, she, she left on purpose is what she did. Um, and third was, and then you'll also know this about me, I'm a sweet tooth. I, I, you'll often find out what you, what you, um, what is your, uh, we're talking about idols, really, what you often worship when is it's what you go to when you're when you're at your lowest when when you're exhausted and if you know me i usually go to ice cream or other candy amen. and uh, yeah i got an amen there um so those were what i would go to and i would seek and seek those things to give me life when i mean at at, at face value ice cream is great i think it tastes wonderful and at face value, going out and playing the sports that I love gave me a lot of value and meaning in my life. The problem is, is that the foundation on which those things that the world offers, uh, it, it, the foundation isn't, isn't the rock that God talks about. It's, it's like sand. And what I found was, what I found in my life is I put more and more of my worth and meaning in my sports in my sweets, in my, you know, getting a girlfriend, I realized that, that it just, it continued to crumble. Injuries came, girls broke up with me. I just started to get unhealthy and get cavities in my teeth. You know, you name it. Now those are my three. Okay. And it's fun to laugh at mine, but like, but, but let's get real. What are the ones in your life? Are, are like, is family something that we all know family can crumble underneath us. Maybe it's maybe it's your hobbies. Maybe it's your school or your work. What happens when you lose your job? What happens when the diagnosis goes wrong? What happens? Our good friend Donna just got attacked by a couple of dogs. Um, what happens when when life goes not the way that you expected? Amen. What happens is our love towards the world is often one. Uh, that we try to have the world reciprocate back to us. In other words, it's, it's like a mirror. I've used this illustration before. We, we can only, like, we're looking to gain from the world what it can, like, uh, I need to explain this a little better. I'm looking for my significance from the world, and so what the world gives me is what I can give back to it, Amen. is what I mean. And... And we're reciprocating that back and forth with the world. Now, that's great if you have a bunch of amazing friends and, and everything in your life is just stable. But, but that often isn't the way it goes. Often, you know, jealousy and anger and, and sickness and disease happen because all of those foundations are built on sand. And they crumble. And they fall. We love... The, the difference that we see with God's love in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, is that God was giving love to the world without expecting anything back, without any reciprocation. And what's beautiful, uh, this is where the, the mirror analogy is really helpful. If we just focus on mirroring the world back to itself, then we'll only be able to be as good as the world around us is. But instead of looking to the world to be our mirror, we look to God and we mirror God to the world. Then we can be God to the world and not expect the world to give back to us. You see, the, 
the passage in John 3.16 is one of, of giving without expecting. The, the other two, when it's talking about love for the world, is expecting the world to give you. It's a difference between receiving and giving. We are to receive our worth and our meaning from God. This is very clear. Uh, this is very clear from the New Testament to, or the Old Testament to the New Testament. We are to receive our worth and meaning from God and God. This is important. God alone. God alone. What there was a day. Uh, I, it's not so much up here because there's not a lot of college sports athletes here. I was a big college sports athlete. Uh, my dad went to the University of Louisville, so I was a big fan. Well, it was a while ago because they're not very good anymore. But uh, in football, uh, back when Lamar Jackson, who's now playing in the pros, was playing for them, they were really, really good. And I remember I got to go to one of one of the games that uh, they were playing, and they were like three and zero, and and they were, you know. Geek, getting close to the top 10, and they were playing against Florida State, who was ranked number two in the country. And it was the first time college game day had ever come to the University of Louisville, ever. And I was at the game, and we stomped them, like 60-something to 15. It was, a, it was a disaster if you were a Florida State fan, and it was like he the heavens opening up for Louisville fans. And you know what I walked away realizing? Oh, Lord. I have way too much of my worth and meaning wrapped up in college sports. And you know what? I, I knew it. I knew it at that moment because the amount of – it was this funny thing. The, the things that we care about most often bring up – there's this welling within us of joy and, and there's peace that we find in it. And I could feel this great amount of joy and pride and peace in my – life is good. Louisville is going to be in the top five. This is amazing. And you know what I realized later in that year when ultimately – the ground crumbled because we lost to University of Kentucky and University of Houston. I found out really quick that the foundation of what I was putting my faith in was flawed. I was putting my worth and meaning into something that wasn't God. Now, I know that's a funny example, but what happens when you do that with things that, that are much, much deeper? What happens when you put that into your, your spouse? your brothers and sisters, your family? What happens you, when you put that into your work? We are to turn to God for our worth and meaning because God gives love without expecting reciprocation to an undeserving world. And we're all a part of that undeserving world. Every single one of us. You guys probably have heard the passage. Romans 3.23 says um, that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, right? All of us are undeserving. And so God came and loved the world, okay? Now, we're not technically here to talk about loving. We're, talk we're here to talk about because we're going through James. We're not going through John. We're here to not talk about not loving the world in the sense that we do not gain our worth and meaning and significance from it. If there's anything, any uh, encouragement that I can do today for you guys is to spend some time thinking, what am I putting my worth and meaning of? What do I go to when the things of life get hard? What do I expect to pull me out of the hole? And I don't want you to just be a good Christian about it and say, Jesus, because I, I sure hope you do that. But we all know that there are times that we look to something and someone other than Jesus to get us out of that hole. And to so take some time today to be real with ourselves and where we're at. But you could, because just like this verse in, in um, James says, he gives grace generously. As the scriptures say, God opposes, opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I want to encourage you to approach this, this state of mind with a, with a, uh, a perception, with a, with a posture of humility. Amen. Yeah. A posture of humility. Because it's only when you know that you're an undeserving sinner who received God's grace on the cross for you that you can, that you can be the mirror of God to the world.
that you can do what God did. As he said, for God so loved the world that he sent his son. What God did for the world was he sacrificed his life for his son. What would it look like for you to give love to the world where you sacrifice your wants and desires for those around you and for the kingdom of heaven? What does that look like for you? I want to read um, one final passage and, and then we'll conclude. This comes from 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. And, uh, and this is kind of Paul talking about, about how, um, how he used, you know, we, essentially what we're talking about. The reason we can do all these things, the reason I can go mountain biking and I can enjoy all these things that, that God gives us, God en- encourages us us to enjoy our family and love our wives and our kids. You know, there are, there are things, it's not that we shouldn't find any, you know, joy in them. It's that they're supposed to point us to God, but it's, it's Christian liberty is what we're talking about. See, Jewish people in the old Testament didn't have that liberty. They, they were under a very strict regiment of law. Okay. And, and God set us free from the law, but the law wasn't just so we could go and do whatever we wanted. And Paul in first Corinthians tells us very clearly to a group of people who are taking their Christian freedom and saying, there's tons of grace for all of us. We're going to go and do whatever we want. And they, they did all sorts of, of strange and different things. If you know the, the city of Corinth. And he says this, he says, though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means, I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. There's a a posture of, God, I I will go anywhere to do anything. If that, if that means me stretching the boundaries of of you know how i typically live my life then i'm going to do that for the purpose of reaching these people god exited heaven the holiest place you could be the most set apart place that you could be to enter into the mess of humanity now i'm not saying that you just go and and just indulge in sin alongside other people who are actively sinning but but he left heaven to come to earth to be with us. He left heaven to come to be with us. For God so loved the world, he did that through mission. So as we think about the things in our life that we tend to love, might we ask ourselves, are we doing them for a sense of of helping people to know Jesus? Or are we doing them to just indulge in the things that we want and then using our hobbies as an excuse to be like, it's and that, believe me, I'm pointing the finger right back at me because I do mountain bike ministry. Is, am I doing this just because I want a mountain bike? <laughs> or do I really want the mountain bikers at Loon to know Jesus? Do I really want that? Now, the unique thing about this is just, this is a continuous awareness, a continual awareness that we all need to have. And I want to encourage you to dwell on that today. There is grace in the gospel Lean into that. If you're here today and you've never put your faith in that, I'd encourage you to. There's nothing that's holding you back from that. There's no sin that's too great Amen. to be forgiven. Amen. But let's go to God in prayer now. Lord, um, the topic of, of idols is one that it just feels a lot like what Ecclesiastes says, it's like a grasping of the wind. It's like as soon as I get a hold on, on the things that I often put before you to, to put them behind you, they slip around and, 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 they, and they become more meaningful or more purposeful to me than they should. 
God, you, you said it, even in, in Luke through Jesus, you said that even if you love your, you know, you said you should hate your family when in comparison to me. Lord, I pray that, that you would be so above anything and everything else in, in terms of the, you know, the scale of, of where our worth and meaning come, that you're not even on the list. It's not that God first and family second and, you know, country third or whatever. Like, it, like you're, you are everything and everything else can be ordered below that. Everything else is in, in a completely separate category because we find our worth and meaning from you and you alone. And God, the freedom that we can receive when we have, we already know that we're loved and forgiven and, and we're made right before, for, before you. When we know that and we can be secure in that, we can then go and actually love our families and love our hobbies and love our careers and love our country in a way that it keeps it in its place and it doesn't expect those things to turn back and reciprocate love back towards us. They don't need to because you've already given it to us. God, help us here today to put our faith and trust in you because there is no, gr no greater and no freer way to live our lives. Help us to love the world without expecting reciprocation. Yeah. And Lord, help us to keep from loving the world where it takes the place of you. We need you, Father. We need your spirit. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I think we've got one more song. He's going to come on up. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Why don't we stand? This is a song we end every mountaintop service with. How great thou art.
Sun comes out and have a wonderful day. Amen. Thank you.